Okay, so just like with regular good old-fashioned fractions, multiplying and dividing them is not a big deal. You just sort of put them together or flip first or whatever. Adding and subtracting rational functions or rational expressions um, requires a little bit of extra work, right? Because we have to still get a common denominator. So it's the same theme as adding regular fractions, but now the common denominators will probably have variables and letters in it. But again, we just need to take it easy, get a common denominator. Let me illustrate this with a simple example basic theme. Suppose I have the rational expression 1 over x plus 3, and I want to add that to the rational expression 1 over x. I just can't add the tops and add the bottoms, just like I can't do that with fractions. So what do I do? Well, I have to get a common denominator. Well, now, how would I do that? Well, a temptation may be to say, well, I'll just add top and bottom 3. Right? Add 3 here, add 3 here. Well, that's a good idea, except when you add 3 or add anything, to the top and bottom of a fraction, you actually change the value of it. The only thing you're allowed to do is multiply by 1. If you want to add something, the only thing you can add, which won't change the value, is 0. So you can add top and bottom 0, but it's not going to change much. But you can multiply through by 1. So actually, what you have to do is take a look at this. And to get a common factor, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom of this by this whole thing, and then multiply top and bottom of this by this whole thing. So if I do that, top and bottom here, I'll multiply by x, and then the top and bottom here I'm going to multiply by x plus 3 because that's the least common multiple. That's the smallest thing that they have in common. So I multiply x plus 3 on the top and I multiply it on the bottom. And I'm using my parentheses here. Well, they're not mine, but I'm borrowing them. Okay, so anyway, so here they are. Now you'll notice the bottoms are the same, so I can just add the tops. Now, there may be a temptation to distribute. And even if you do it correctly, x squared plus 3x, let's curb that temptation. Let's keep denominators as factored as we can, because there might be some cancellation. There may not be. But as a general rule, don't waste time on a quiz or an exam, or just in life in general. Don't waste time expanding out denominators, unless there's some really compelling reason. And I don't, ha I don't see that here today. Uh, x plus x, that's 2x. And then I just have a plus 3, which is added to technically an invisible plus 0, so just plus 3. And all over the common bottom, x times x plus 3. Ah, can I cancel the x plus 3 with the x plus 3 here and just have a 2 on top? Looks good, looks good. And if it looks good to you, that's exactly why this is classic mistake number 3. Ding! Don't cancel unless it's a factor, right? You can only cancel factors. The 2 is not a factor of everything. If, if I just put parentheses around there, in fact, maybe I have, look at this. Sort of picking this up on the, on the fly here. Sorry about that. If I just sneak those parentheses around there somehow, you see, sort of semi. Then I could have canceled, but those parentheses are not there. It's a big difference, and so I can't do it. That's just the answer. There it is. OK, um, how about you try one? How about you give this one a shot? How about 1 over x plus z, introducing now two letters, plus 1 over x minus z. Combine those, first get a common denominator, and see how you do.